Ether channels can be configured either manually or dynamically. We'll start by looking at manually for now. We first need to add a physical interface into the Ether channel. We're going to start with gig 0 slash 1. Under the interface, we're going to enter the command channel group 5 mode on. Notice number 5. This represents the logical interface that we're creating. It can be any reasonable number. We'll soon add a second interface to this channel group. But first, do you notice that we say mode on? The mode is whether this is manual or dynamic. Using the on keyword means that we're manually configuring this channel group. This means the switch will assume that there is a valid ether channel or lag at the other end of the link. You'll also notice that as soon as we leave the interface configuration, a new interface called port channel 5 has been created and is up. Let's jump into another interface and we'll add that into the same channel group. If we use a different number here, it would be part of an entirely different ether channel, so it's important to get the number right. So far, we've added physical interfaces gig 00 and gig 01 to a logical interface called port channel 5. We can configure this port channel interface just as we would for any other interface. For example, we could configure it as a trunk port. We could just as easily make it an access port or add an IP address to make it a layer 3 interface. We'll just add a description while we're here. To check if it's working, we can use the command show ether channel summary. This shows all the port channels configured on this switch, as well as the physical member interfaces. There's also a few flags next to our interfaces, which we can decode using the handy table above. In our case, you can see that we have a layer 2 port channel. Now here's another quiz to get you thinking. You might need to try this in a lab or by doing your own research. As always though, it'll be time well spent. 